Hello everyone, FPL Raptor here and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. FPL have officially launched their new game mode fantasy challenge ahead of game week 30. So in today's video, we'll be taking a look at it, the rules, how it differs from traditional FPL, and I would love your opinion down below in the comments as well. Are you excited for this new game mode? If you do enjoy today's video and you get any use out of it, please do smash that like button. And if you're new around here, make sure to subscribe as well. But without further ado, let's jump into it. So guys, in today's video, I'll be taking a look at what is Fantasy Challenge, what are the rules, how does it differ, differ from traditional FPL, and then at the end of the video, I've actually got my first Fantasy Challenge team selection ahead of Game Week 30 as well. I should just note, there are a few things that are still a bit up in the air. I've been talking to some other content creators as well, and we're still a little bit unsure about a couple of things, because this is being launched in beta mode. The whole point of it being launched in Game Week 30 rather than in Game Week 1 is I think they're going to test out what works and what doesn't for the back end of the season. Hopefully take on board our feedback as well, so do let me know if you have any feedback throughout the weeks and I'll try and feed that back myself and hopefully it'll be improved for next season too. So do stick with it even if it is a little bit rough around the edges for the back end of the season. So what is Fantasy Challenge? It is a weekly FPL game mode. So here is the wording coming straight from Fantasy Premier League. Introducing FPL Challenge, a more casual format of FPL where managers pick a new squad each game week. Scoring isn't built up over the season. Instead, each week is a fresh start, meaning managers aren't penalized if they miss a game week, allowing for a much more dip in, dip out format. So as you can see by the wording here, this is tailoring to the more casual managers and probably the managers that tend to forget to make transfers, realize they're not doing very well, and then just bin off FPL halfway through the season. Most of you watching this probably aren't those types of managers, but I still doesn't, I don't think that means it's only for them but I certainly think this will cater more to like those fun work leagues where people don't feel like they have to every single week remember to make transfers so there will not be a season score it will literally reset every single week which is quite nice because it gives us something else to look forward to each week where it's not if you have a bad week you just move on to the next one and a bad week doesn't affect you if you have an absolute stinker and score like five points it doesn't matter at all because at the end of the day if you're not winning it doesn't matter if you finish 1,000th in that week, right? You are obviously aiming to win it every time. So it encourages you to take, to take risks and it makes you, I guess, look forward to every single game week for at least a slightly different reason now. You can see there's some additional information as well. Each manager may only enter one team, so you can still only enter one team. It will be against the rules to enter more than one, but there will be leagues. So each team will be able to compete in up to 25 leagues. So again, if you are play this with your friends or with your work friends or colleagues, I should say, then you can enter into leagues with them as well. So this could create a really, really nice format for some more fun games to play rather than it just being all about that season long format. Your team is definitely entirely separate from your team in the main fantasy league game and your score does not affect the main game. So you do not need to worry about if you take a risk with your fantasy challenge team, it affects your main team. And then the final thing to note before we move on to the next section is that the scoring system is identical to FPL, barring a few fun challenges where certain players get double points, etc. But goals, assists, clean sheets, bonus points, those will all be the same. It's not going to be points for like CDMs getting passes and interceptions, which... I think is a little bit frustrating because I think that would have been a really nice addition if Fantasy Challenge rewarded some different players. Like I said, we've always said, I think it was like Kante back in the day, such an elite player in the Premier League, but just not an FPL option. It would be nice if they did change the scoring system, but I can only imagine the coding that that requires. So I understand why they want to keep it simple. So FPL scoring will be the same apart from when there's a fun challenge. So let's now take a look at what the upcoming challenges are across Game Week 30, 31 and 32 and discuss what they could be in the future as well. So guys, Fantasy Challenge sounds good. There's a new game mode. They're trying to spice it up a little bit, which I love. So what will these challenges actually look like? We've said there's going to be a different weekly challenge every week, but what are some examples? So we now know for 30, 31 and 32 what we have coming up. I would love to know down below in the comments, please, if you're watching this, because I know you guys are very creative. What do you think would be a really fun challenge next season? Would you like to see one around only a 50 million budget or something very difficult? Would you like to see one where you have to pick like 11 defenders or a certain nationality or only players above six foot? I'm sure... Some of this would be difficult to code, but I would love to know what you think some fun challenges would be. And I'll pin or I'll at least like some of my favorite ones down below as well. And I'll reply to them as well. So let me know down below what challenges you'd like to see. But just to give you an idea about what is coming up in game week 30, this is the first one. So the game week 30 deadline and we have unlimited funds. I'm really disappointed about this. 
I'm trying to not be too downbeat about Fancy Challenge because I think it's actually a very good idea and I think it could really, really increase the amount of enjoyment that a lot of people get with the game. But it is the wrong week to do unlimited funds. Unlimited funds, basically. So you've got no budget, which is a really... I'd like this chip in FPL, by the way. I'd like one game week each season to have a free hit with unlimited funds. I think that would be really, really fun. Imagine playing that in like game week 37 with a double. You can have De Bruyne, you can have Haaland, you can have Saka, you can have all of these expensive players. But regardless... It's the wrong week. Like, Fulham play against Sheffield United, you'll want Fulham players. Chelsea play against Burnley, you want Chelsea players. They're so cheap. I've built, and I see at the end, a draft, and some of them have come in under 100 million. Like, you don't need the budget. Arsenal play against Man City, so the value of having Haaland, Saka, De Bruyne, etc. You just don't want those players, probably. So I feel like this is the wrong week to have the unlimited budget. It probably would have been more useful in future game weeks. And actually, the Game Week 31 challenge, I think, would have been very useful in Game Week 30, which is forward score double. And I would personally like to see more of this than the budget stuff. I find the budget stuff a little bit superficial and it's like, yeah, reduce the budget, increase the budget. It's very easy to do, but forward score double, that sounds exciting because all of a sudden I'm looking at game week 31 now and I'm like, oh, I could pick three very differential forwards. And if you captain one of them, I think you basically could get like quadruple score. So, or you could get like four captains worth. So we'll have to obviously clarify all of that information, but it's exciting because you're getting like basically four captains potentially. And you're getting double points for forwards. So a lot of the information that will be processing, which forwards have the best fixtures, which forwards have the best data in it. Every week, if there's something like that, I think it can really make the content more interesting for me from a selfish perspective. But also for you, you can really look into the data from certain players and certain fixtures. So I really like the Game Week 31 challenge, which was forwards score double. And then Game Week 32, I'm a big fan of this as well. So Manchester United play against Liverpool and the information they've provided is celebrating Man United versus Liverpool with those double points for players from those teams. They've called it Reds rivalry. So if you pick six players from Man United and Liverpool, they've essentially got a double game week. Liverpool would play Man United and Man United and then obviously Man United play Liverpool and Liverpool. So essentially, I guess six captains, you could look at it instead or seven, I suppose, if you captain someone outside of that. So this is good. I mean, these scores are going to be monstrous some weeks. If they continue with these challenges, we're going to see above 100 points quite often, which is fun. We want points. And I also think because it's such a, a weekly format, you can take risks. Go without Salah. You, I mean, what is the value in going for Salah? Everyone's going to have Salah, right? You're trying to win it. Go for like Luis Diaz. Go for like a Harvey Elliott. You could really mix it up. Go for triple Man United defense just on the random off chance that they pick up some attacking returns or keep a clean sheet. There is no reason to go super template here. And the more fun I think they have with these challenges, we might see some very, very different teams. And again, I'll show you my team for Game Week 30 at the end of the video because... I would not be picking loads of obvious players. That's not to say a couple of them, you don't pick like Son, Palmer and Salah this week are great options. I'm not saying you definitely go without all three, but have some fun with it. And this is maybe something which will help us carry this across to the real FPL game, the season long one, is if we start taking risks in the weekly game and we really enjoy that, and it, it brings that spark back for some people in FPL, it might encourage people to go a little bit more different in the season long game too. So those are some examples of the fancy challenges over the next three weeks. Like I said, please let me know down below which types of challenges you'd like to see. And I will see if I can feed that back as well, because I know they are watching content, but they're also trying to take on board any feedback that we can give them so that they can improve it for next season. So like I said, let me know what your thoughts are down below. So like I said, guys, there are still a few things that we're slightly unsure. And I think even if the rules seem very clear, I think there'll be some things where we just need to experience a game week. So I think Fantasy are using this as a bit of a tester. And I think we'll be using Game Week 30 as a bit of a tester as well, just to see how practically this works on paper. But here is my understanding of it. If I get anything wrong and you think it's wrong, please let me know down below and I'll pin a comment if I think there is something that I've got slightly wrong here. But there are some key differences between Fantasy Challenge and traditional FPL. The first is you'll be able to pick up to five players from each club, which I absolutely love. I'd kind of like to see this a little bit in the main game, but I haven't really thought about the ramifications of that. Maybe there's a reason for three. Maybe the teams will become even more template if you could choose five players from each club. But I like it in Fantasy Challenge, at least, because you can target those fixtures. So let's say, for example, this week, Fulham play against Sheffield United. If you think I'm pretty sure that Fulham keep a clean sheet and I don't see many other clean sheets, Pick five Fulham defenders. I mean, if that comes in, you're looking at 30 points just through clean sheets alone, right? A back four and then Leno in goal, you could do that. Or if you think Chelsea are going to put loads of goals past Burnley, pick three or four attackers from Chelsea. So you can really put all of your eggs in one basket. And if you think there are only two fixtures that you really want to target, you could have like five Spurs, five Chelsea and one Fulham. And that's your 11 straight away this week, for example. So I really do like this. And I think in a weekly format, it's a very, very good idea. So big thumbs up for me for that one. You'll also be able to, and this is the big thing here, and this is the thing where we, we've got some slight things we're not fully sure on, but you'll be able to make transfers in your team and change captaincy 
up until two points. So once the player's team kicks off, so let's say this week before Chelsea Burnley kicks off, you can make changes to your Chelsea and Burnley players and for all of the teams that haven't played up until then, up until the game kicks off. So you can get the information around lineups. So let's say, for example, you think you want one of Sterling or Jackson, but you want to make sure that they definitely start this week. You can put Sterling and Jackson in your team, wait for the lineups, and if they don't play, you can just remove them. Let's use another example, Kieran Trippier. Let's say you're unsure if he's going to play because he's currently flagged in FPL. You put Kieran Trippier in, and if it comes around and the team sheets come out and Kieran Trippier is either on the bench or not starting, you simply remove him for Livramento. So this actually means that in-game week changes can be made up until when the team kicks off. Then, after the team kicks off, that player is locked in. So let's go back to the Sterling and Jackson example. Let's say you pick Sterling and Jackson. Once that team kicks off, they are then locked in your team. You can't sub them out. You cannot transfer them out either. Okay, so it, it has to be before the team kicks off, but you do get lineup information. The other deadline is the only official deadline for Fantasy Challenge, which is when there are less than four teams to play. Don't ask me why, but after there are less than four teams to play, that will be the deadline when no further changes can be made. So I guess that means that when there is a final game on a Sunday or a Monday, you won't be able to wait for lineups for that game. That will be a point where you can make no further changes. So this is exciting, I think, because it rewards you if you're sat there and looking at lineups at the weekend. I guess it then calls into question kind of the same issue of what if you're in a different time zone and you can't be there for the team sheets. I guess you can't take advantage of that, which obviously isn't ideal. And I'm sure some people will be a bit upset about that again if you are in a different time zone. But for those of us that are just sat there watching the football, wait for the lineups, maybe make some changes. Let's say, for example, you want to pick a real big differential. Let's say, I don't know, Mudrick starts against Burnley. That could be a cheeky punt. And you could wait for the lineups and just go, do you know what? He's starting. I'm going to go for it. So I do really, really like this. I want to just confirm this will not be, as far as I'm aware, like UCL fantasy. So in UCL fantasy and Euros, you can basically have players in your starting 11. And once they play, if you've got players on your bench that haven't yet played, you can then transfer them in if that player doesn't do well. So let's say you had like, again, like Jackson gets two and on the bench, you've got Darwin. You can't, after Jackson's played, remove Jackson and sub in Darwin and you can't transfer them out. Okay, so it's not like UCL fantasy in that regard. I think basically what they're trying to do here is just make it so that you can get that lineup information. Once you have the lineup information, you can make the changes if you want to. I think that's what Fantasy Premier League are trying to do with this. And I'm all aboard. I think it's a good idea. And it might be something that they eventually decide to carry over to the official game. We've spoken about for a while that they could make the deadline the first kickoff and therefore you get the lineup information for that first game. It might be something that they are subtly testing here to see if that's what they want to carry over to the official Premier League game. So I think I've covered everything there. Let me know down below if I haven't made sense there. But the key thing to recap, click five players from each team. You can make transfers up until that team kicks off or until the final deadline, which is when there are less than four teams to play. It will not be like UCL fantasy where you can transfer players or sub players in after players in your starting 11 have played. You can't change captaincy once a player has played. If they were your captain, that sticks. And therefore, we can wait for the lineup information, which will be very useful. I think I've covered everything there. So guys, I'm still a little bit unsure about what I want to do for fantasy challenge content moving forward. And I would just love to know down below. I'm not saying that I would definitely do what you guys suggest, but I would love to know what you think. So please let me know your feedback down below. Do you think this is something? So every week there'll be a fantasy challenge team. Do you think it's something where you would like a separate video every week, maybe a little bit shorter than my normal videos, let's say 15 to 20 minutes, where I just present my fantasy challenge team in detail, go through the defenders, midfielders, forwards, as I would with a normal team selection? Or would you prefer I like tag it onto my team selection video? So in my team selection, I'll go through it as per normal and there'll be like a five or 10 minute section at the end of a team selection video where I go through my fantasy challenge. I'm kind of easy either way. It doesn't affect me massively. It will be about the same amount of content. I suppose it'd be slightly easier for me to tag it onto the team selection video. But if you would rather than be separate, you can see I've got a slightly different thumbnail for this video. Then maybe it is best to just have it as a separate video. I'd love to know what you think down below. I'm probably leaning at the moment when I've got the time to making it a separate video and maybe like Game Week 31 when it's a midweek deadline, maybe I'll just tag it onto the end of my team selection. So I'm sort of going back and forth on it, but I would love your feedback down below because I want the content to be the best possible for you. This is, though, very briefly, I've not really thought about this in too much detail because I don't really want to. I don't want Fancy Challenge to become a chore for me. This is my unlimited budget team. And as you can see, I didn't really need unlimited budget. It's around a 100 million, especially if you downgrade the bench because my bench is very expensive just for the sake of it. But if you downgrade the bench, I could get this team to like 85, 90 mil. I mean, it's very, very cheap. I'm kind of taking advantage of a few things here. The first being that you can have more than three players from a team. So as you can see, I've actually got four Fulham players in Leno, Castagna, Robinson, and Awobi. 
So immediately I'm taking advantage of the rules here. And I like that a lot. The other thing I'm looking at here is putting all of my eggs in one basket because I mean, there's no rank or you will probably get a rank in this and there will be leagues. But at the end of the day, you're just probably trying to win every week. I'm not going to be overly fussed about mini leagues. I'm not going to be overly fu focused about a weekly rank. I just want to try and win it at some point. So I will put all my eggs in one basket. You can see I've gone for triple Chelsea attack and I've gone for triple Fulham defense. I like that. I may even go for a fourth Fulham defender. I may even go for another couple of attackers from one of the other teams and just put all of my eggs in a few baskets. Because if Fulham keep a clean sheet, and if Chelsea do score four or five goals, this team is probably looking very, very good. I'm not going to go super template with it. In fact, I have the only maybe three template players here I've got is Palmer, Salah, Watkins, because I think they are very good. I've taken out Son. I've got no Kulisevsky, Madison. I've got no Spurs in my starting 11 because you might as well back against what everyone else is going to do. I wouldn't recommend this in normal fantasy, but I might as well have a bit of fun with it. So I've decided that I think Luton could give Spurs a game. I don't really believe that, but you never know. I've gone for Sterling, who most people would absolutely hate. I've got Jackson captain, which I think is pretty cheeky. I'd love to have Jackson in my actual team. And maybe this will be one of the nice things about this fantasy challenge. You know, there's always players that you wish you could own in your main team, but you just can't get them in. Jackson's one of those. I'd love to, but he's on nine yellow cards and I like my forwards on my wild card. So Jackson captain, let's have some fun with it. If he doesn't do very well, I don't care. Awobi, I think a lot of people go for Muniz and rightly so. Muniz is absolutely awesome as an FP option, but why not back Awobi rather than Muniz? I've got Eze. He's on penalties. No one's going to back Eze most likely. Nottingham Forest are actually okay defensively. So on paper, not a great pick, but why not back Eze? So this is kind of the way that I was approaching it. Just pick some players that you can have some fun with. Also, you, like I said, you don't have to worry about rotation risks. So if like Sterling and Trippier, you could have them in your starting 11. And if the lineups come out that Sterling and Trippier don't start, then I can just simply remove them. So there we go. I'm not going to talk about this in too much detail because I might I might actually have a fantasy challenge video later on the week with my team selection where I've thought about it in a bit more detail or I might not. I've not really decided on it. I'd like to know what your feedback is. Are you excited for this or is this something like, oh, I just don't care? Because I, I, as much as I don't do it just for views, I'm not going to put out a video every week that it's just not people aren't that interested in. I'd rather just tag it on at the end of another existing video. I'm not going to make content just for the sake of it. So I would love to know what your opinion is. And I'd love to know what your opinion is on Fancy Challenge in general. Please let me know down below. This is one of those where I really genuinely do want to comment. It's not for the algorithm. I'd love to know what your feedback is on this just at a first glance. And also let me know what sort of team you're looking at for Game Week 32. I might make changes to this, which... I, Maybe I should on paper, which is add some Liverpool and Spurs attackers because they probably are the most likely to get attacking returns. But I like the idea that I doubt there's anyone with this exact same team. And that's kind of what I want. I want to put together a team where there are very few, if any, people that have the exact same setup. And I can't imagine there'll be many with this exact same team. So let me know what you think of that down below and let me know what you think of Fantasy Challenge 2. So guys, there we have it. That is my fantasy challenge first video. This could be something that becomes a staple of the channel or it could be something that people don't really enjoy. But I would love to know, like I said, what your feedback is and if you're excited for this for the remainder of the season. And feel free to type out your team below so that I know which sort of players that you're looking at for Game Week 30. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye.